okay all this is from different tribal communities in india we have paintings that you know this tribal art forms uh date back to you know maybe early uh say you know early uh 80 centuries that's like really really old so there is a myth i mean people think that there are no tribal communities in india but it's not true we have many many tribal communities and some of them uh you will find that they're very close to ghanian tribal communities as well so if you can see all these they use uh, let's go show us the one you are talking about can you show us the one you are talking about so if you see that one i think you will be able to relate to it more okay. can you see that one yes it's basically all of this is handmade and the colors are uh, organic they don't use the the paint the modern paint no they use basically tree barks and flowers to take out the paints and colors and that's how you reach here and if you come here on this side okay let's go I really want to understand much. I want to get much understanding of this one, so that when I get one, I know how to use it. So if you see all of this, it's all brass. It's called. It's all brass. It's a male cow. It's a buffalo. Now, if you see all these intricacies, all of it is handmade. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Can you see these things? Now, brass has a tendency. uh the if it's not polished properly it loses its shine which is what is exactly happening wow. but if you polish it with the uh, brass polish it will shine like anything okay so these these are mainly uh, you know uh, these are mainly uh, you know inspired by either nature or by our religious books so if you see this uh, in india we uh, worship the cow okay Uh, okay, so you must know about that, yeah. right? So what? What if I'm um, like me, for instance, for coming from Ghana, yeah. that I don't know much about Indian culture. If I see this, what should I do? You should buy them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> on, you worship. So, yeah. So it's not it's not necessary for everyone to worship it. But I'm just telling you uh, an aspect that people in India, basically the Hindu community. they worship the cow okay as their mother because it provides you with milk and from milk you take out a lot of things we in indian culture milk has a lot of uh, uses okay we derive a lot of things from milk we have our own kind of cheese we have uh, uh, you know butter that we take out from it then uh, you use it in your cuisine almost every day and you're eating yogurt almost every day so um, This is just you know in the religious books it's written that cow is your mother and you're supposed to worship it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask one thing please? Yes please. I understand you Indian most of you don't eat cow. You yes eat yes. Why? So because we worship it so you can't eat it right? Mm. I have I have a you cat. You can't eat your I have cow. a cat. Yes. Which is a pet but okay. I, I eat it. <laughs> well that's your culture but no, it's no, not no, it's not culture. see it's not like nobody eats beef it's not that this is a myth that's what i'm trying to tell you there are communities in india which which consume beef but there are all the, the majority of the community is of hindus which worship cow uh, and so they don't they don't consume beef okay in their religion their religion does not permit it okay but if if your if another person's religion permits it then of course why not there's no restriction on it okay Thank you. Thank you. No problem. And then uh, if you see this is another kind. This is basically wood. And all of this is again hand painted. So if you can see all of this and this looks so beautiful. Thank you. And this is marble. Again, it this is from the um you know uh, probably 1400 uh, 1400 to 1400 1400 to 1600 not yes yes okay so this is basically a marble plate so which they have painted and uh, prepared this this is basically sort of like a mughal so art when the mughals came akbar and you know shah jahan who built the taj mahal the taj mahal is again built of marble so that's where the culture came from okay. I really want to understand much get clear understanding about this. So okay. this. Yes. yes. So this is basically Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Lord okay. Shiva from the Hindu uh, Hindu religion. Okay. He so has a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> so he has a lot of incarnations, okay? And he has a lot of faces. This one is 
where this is where he is represented as the dance of uh, god of dance he is called nataraj where nat means dance and raj means king so king of god a uh, king of dance or god of dance so all our uh, uh, most of our uh, classical dances in india like bharatnatyam kathak they all worship shiva when they before they begin their practice or before they begin their dance they always uh, do a small ritual where they pray to the god of dance here he is represented uh, in a dancing position it has a snake around it so see. yeah 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 so what does the snake stand for so he is also the uh, god of snakes okay it's called uh, he's a uh, nagmani and uh, god of the nagas nagas is snake in hindi or uh, sanskrit okay and it's harmful sorry is it harmful to human no it's not harmful to him it's his friend okay yeah. he has uh, he usually has a snake around his neck as well okay so uh, if you see the other incarnations the photos of other incarnations you'll find that the snake is always around the neck i can see the leg is on i don't know what is that the one is yeah i think it's the demon is what it's the demon demon okay so he step on the demon yes. okay so uh, you know when he is happy he dances but also when he is angry he dances and that is called uh, tandav so when he was angry at the demon he danced and he you know he caused destruction and then he eventually killed the demon so that is the story there are a lot of uh, stories you know from the religious books most of the dances uh, classical dances are also inspired by small stories from the religious books which is ramayana mahabharata that way okay. thank you so let's go to now this one is the buddha yes you know him yeah right? buddha is so him buddha was also born in india okay uh, in a place called bodh gaya uh, bodh sorry bodh gaya is the place where he uh, attained enlightenment where he eventually turned into the buddha so uh, there are communities we we also have a buddhist community in india and uh, they worship buddha and he is also seen as a you know if if you you'll find buddha statues in many households in india because he is seen as a, a symbol of peace and spirituality and serenity so we have various versions of this this is just one in brass so let's say so i'm i want to convert to buddha what are some of the words i have to recite before when i sit like this what are some of the ways they recite this is basically the meditation position he when he uh, went to bodh gaya to attain enlightenment he was actually a king you know and then he left his kingdom because he was just so uh, you know he was fed up and he was not finding peace anywhere so he just left all of his kingdom behind all his riches wealth everything and then he just went around looking for peace and eventually he reached bodh gaya and there he meditated and eventually found enlightenment okay, my last question do uh, indians believe in god of course of course you believe in but do you have like the way other countries have temple that they worship god they go to church do you have something like that in india so you know i think uh, we must be having the largest number of temples churches everything is the largest because india is a very large country and also the most populous now so we need gods you know <laughs> and we need their places of worship a lot of people say that indians don't believe in god that's, that's what not true abdul he'll tell you he has just come back from india a few months ago he'll tell you do indians believe in god but every religion is very strong in india yes. islam is very strong hinduism is very strong christianity is very strong they respect the various religions so they worship all the gods we have they worship the jesus they worship the muhammad they worship the hindu uh, Hindu gods. Yeah. Okay. Tell them about the temples in India. Did you go to yeah. any temples? Wow, yeah, I visited so many temples. <laughs> okay. Uh, the famous temple in. We have Christians in India. I am a Christian. You are Christian. Christian. Which 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 church is the worship? Sorry. Which, which church do you belong to? Roman Catholic. Because we don't uh, catch which is a wizard, so you belong to. I was a Catholic. Okay. Please, <laughs> uh, my question before I. Leave. Yeah. What is the popular festival? What is the popular festival celebrated in India? Oh, uh, okay. We have so many festivals. Yeah. Like we celebrate all festivals. Get get them the flyer, please. So tomorrow, actually, we are celebrating one of the festivals. Yeah. It's a Hindu festival, and I would like you to like to invite you all. Oh, yeah. 
It's here, yes. We're celebrating it tomorrow and it's free to all. Like it's open to all. Okay. Uh, so please if you can capture this. Yes. I'd like to already. invite people. I have one already. Okay. Thank you. Sure, so I'll give much. it to you. And please, since you've been here, what's Ghanaian food have you tried so far? Ghanaian food, okay. I've tried wachai. I've tried uh, your groundnut soup. I've tried no not fufu. I tried banku. <laughs> Plantain, yes. And Sorry? Akbele. No, those ones that you try, not the Ghanaian dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? That's I all. think I tried your palm nut soup K -K. also. K -K. And actually I make ground nut soup almost every week in my house. Oh, so wow. that's so nice. She's basically, she's basically now a Ghanaian. Yes. Okay. And the shito. <laughs> <laughs> the shito. Lastly, <laughs> so it's in Indian community we have these um, ladies. Normally they put they have some dots around is it reddish something yes. Yes. who are the people who normally put those so it's actually a symbol of uh, being married okay i'm married but i'm not using any of it it's my choice but uh, married women usually so so for in hindu religion if you're a married woman you have uh, 16 signs or 16 um, how do i say it yeah, it's called shringars okay signals S uh, signs of being married so it de starts from uh, vermilion here then you have the uh, bindi the one that you have here is called bindi then you have your earrings then you have your chain like we have in christians the gold chain they also have a black and gold chain that they wear then you have the ring and several things like that you have anklets all of that is a sign that you are you are a married woman. Why is it that the men, the men, the married men wear black earrings? Men? Yeah. No, no, no. no the black the men, men. You cannot recognize if they're married or not. Some men have a fashion. They are not yeah. for religion. They wear black uh, earrings. For fashion. Have you seen, have you seen it? That's for fashion. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are some communities that there are some regions where even the men pierce their ears okay. and they wear gold bang, uh, gold earrings. And uh, you know everything in Indian culture signifies something. But as we're moving forward, we're becoming a modern country. So we are basically blending things into each other. You know, today even Christian ladies, married women, they will wear your bindi and vermilion. You don't have to be married to wear a bindi. You know what I like about India, your culture, your dressing. Indian women don't expose their body. That's one thing I like about India. And that's my third country. Yeah, that's my third country on my list that I want to be. Thank you very much.